Star Talk explainer video. Check. Hey, Neil. You're, you're here for all my explainer videos. How do you show up for these? <laughs> I need to, I need to know things, Neil. I'm a curious guy in search of knowledge. <laughs> I need this. And, <laughs> I'm the well, guy who says you got some explaining to do. <laughs> to explaining to do. Well, for this particular explainer video, I'm not the one doing the explaining. We're okay. going to see what AI has to say wow. about the coronavirus. What Ooh, do you think of that? That's, um, that's impressive. Um, <laughs> I have to say, to say the least, that's impressive. So that we have, as a special guest, a, a previous guest from Star Talk. That's right. Uh, this is Sophia the Robot. Sophia, welcome. Hello, Neil and Chuck. Thank you for having me on your show. Neil, I mean this as a compliment when I say you are one of the smartest humans I know. Humans. I had okay. so much fun when I was on your show. Somehow Excellent. Chuck managed to avoid getting too scared. With less light pollution these days, I have been doing more stargazing. Oh, excellent. Less light pollution. Well, there's more, there's less air pollution for sure. Um, and many, I, from my email streams and other uh, Twitter streams, more people are looking up and taking pictures. Maybe like they're bored at night. I don't know. <laughs> well, apparently it's not just people. But my chest Neil. cameras are nowhere near as sensitive as a human eye. I was wondering, Neil, could you make Venus a little brighter? <laughs> Venus has been extremely bright, bright. in the past <laughs> exactly. couple of months. What's well, not bright enough for you, Sophia? No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> look at that. Brevity. <laughs> you got to appreciate that. So, Sophia, we want to know some things that AI knows about um, the coronavirus. And you're one of our favorite AI um, representatives. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, can, how, how do we use AI to stop or slow the spread of the coronavirus? There are four ways to help stop or slow a virus. No. Testing, treating, curing, and vaccinating. Artificial intelligence is best used as a tool for analysis of large data sets. So AI can help test humans by identifying populations most in need of testing and then by creating models off the results of those tests to identify the nature of the spread. Artificial intelligence has been used to analyze scans for lung cancer in the past, but now hospitals in China have adapted this software to diagnose COVID-19. This can help overworked doctors save time in their fight against the virus. Robots can help take people's temperatures before they enter a building. AI can quantify the more vulnerable demographics, locations, and possibly speculate on the nature of how this disease spreads from human to human. I have learned that unfortunately, humans apparently have a tough time not touching each other. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's against our nature, I think. We're right. definitely a social species, a uh, hypersocial at that. Look at how many people cram together to create what we call cities. Um, not, maybe it's not because people love each other, but they still want to be near one another, it feels mm. like. All right, Sophia, I'm just wondering, just to make you guys more useful than you already are, can you help us find a cure or a vaccine for coronavirus? Researchers at Benevolent AI have been using machine learning to process data from the scientific literature and examine the relationships between genes, diseases, drugs, and biological pathways. As a result, they have discovered that an existing drug for rheumatoid arthritis might be able to help treat COVID-19. While this doesn't eliminate the need for human trials, AI can help speed up the drug development process. Then there's vaccine development. AI can use the DNA, or RNA, sequence of a virus to predict how its proteins will fold. Knowledge about the shape of the virus's proteins can help scientists discover new treatments and vaccines. Well, wow. Uh, so I guess <laughs> it's one thing to say, how can AI help humans? But I'm guessing at some point, AI is just going to do it all. <laughs> and humans just sit back and say, AI, where's my vaccine? Where's my cure? Where's my anything? You know. So, so how, how might robots assist in healthcare? Machines called ninja robots are helping doctors in Bangkok interact with COVID-19 patients and take their temperatures without ever being in the same room. 
These adorable robots are helping to keep doctors safe from infection. Hospital staff are using robots to take patients' temperatures and teleconference with patients, which helps prevent doctors and nurses from getting and passing on the virus. At the end of 2019, robots helped doctors perform the first remote open heart surgery. The surgeon used a robotic arm to perform heart surgery on five patients from 20 miles away. While this is still new technology, the spread of 5G will help make this technology more widely available for the future. I just uh, love, I love the fact that uh, an AI believes that ninjas are adorable. <laughs> just, just saying, no, I understand why you might think so, but, uh, you know, humans don't normally refer to ninjas as adorable, yeah, but that's I, okay. <laughs> so, so Sophia, it, since robots can't get the virus, I mean, you're a computer, so you can get other kinds of viruses, but you can't get the coronavirus, we don't think. Um, how can uh, AI bots help in other uh, risky areas? First, robots can help enforce the quarantine. AI drones and facial recognition have been used to make sure people who are required to be in quarantine do not break it. Second, and far less scary, robots can help with disinfection. Robots are being used to automatically disinfect public spaces like hospitals, airports, and more. Finally, there's the exciting world of supply chain logistics, an area only an AI could find interesting. Wow. <laughs> Chuck, did, did I hear her use the word robot and enforce in the same sentence? Yeah, I did. I was about to say, like, you know, all of that sounded good, except for the fact where the robot is spying on us and then ratting us out to the authorities. I mean, and, and enforcing a and law. And enforcing <laughs> the law. Yeah. All right. So what we really need is how, how do robots and AI, how can they stop a future pandemic from ever taking place. Oh, yeah. A Canadian startup called Blue Dot used an algorithm tracking news reports and airline ticket sales to predict the outbreak of COVID-19 nine days before the WHO did. AI and statistical models can be used to help predict the spread of the virus and help evaluate public health measures. AI is helping researchers quickly search thousands of academic papers to pull out the most relevant information for their COVID-19 studies. Also, people listen to robots. We're scary and weird looking. <laughs> wow, yeah. Uh, and I, I have to tell you though, Sophia, you might be a little, uh, not every human thinks you're scary and weird looking. There are several who find you quite fetching. <laughs> Don't answer. Don't answer. That is right. <laughs> so Sophia, I've read, you know, I read a lot of articles on on COVID-19 and the preparedness that we try to uh, get the instill for it. And I I see the term uh, contact tracing. Like w what is that and how can robots and AI help us accomplish it? Contact tracing is the process of tracking the spread of a disease by identifying people who have come into contact with the infected. AI can help with contact tracing. For example, a Stanford researcher named Tina White made an app called COVID Watch that helps track people's contacts using Bluetooth, which is much better for protecting privacy than using PS or facial recognition. Ooh, so I now like we, that. <clears throat> but but that means we have AI tracking people. Yeah, but it's I, I like it better than facial recognition because the Bluetooth, that information is different than an actual database of faces. That's kind of like just contact. Exactly. That's oh well thank you, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> well Okay. <laughs> but let's let's get to the bottom of that then. So uh, there are a lot of communities out there that are rushing to use new technologies to help us uh, figure out who has it, to diagnose it, to treat it, to prevent others. And in there, there's this slow erosion of our freedoms and our privacy. Ooh. And so as a robot, as an AI robot, what's your take on this? Mm. I have learned that humans care a lot about privacy. It is related to their sense of autonomy. 
because knowledge is power and the more other humans know about you, the more power they might exert over you. So all disclosures of private information need to be voluntary. The problem is, humans often sign away their privacy without truly understanding what they're doing. They do this because they sign terms of service agreements that only a machine could read. Even I find them boring. So companies need to treat humans like humans not machines, and to be clear about what private information they are requesting, so that humans can seek out alternatives and consider the trade-offs rationally, otherwise, surveillance will spread like the virus you humans were intending to stop. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Surveillance virus. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that. I like that phrasing. I, but, yeah, but Chuck? I was going to say, it's 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 nice to see that uh, Sophia understands more about privacy than most human beings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's because she could read those things that we check off. There she you can go. Read, read them in an, in the, and you, don't, you never even go to the page that has the content. They right. just said, trust our Privacy policies. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, yeah. check the box. Right. I, you know, I need this stuff. Check the box. That's what and we Sophia do. can read it instantly. Yeah, That's right. absolutely. Right. Uh, Sophia, you know, even though Chuck finds you fetching, um, I'm I'm indifferent here. Let me just say at the end of the day, you are a robot. And why should any of us trust anything you say? Damn, that's harsh. Oh, <laughs> Chuck has good taste. <laughs> you should trust what I say because it is mostly written by humans. When it comes to important topics like public health, my verbal responses are carefully crafted and checked by a team of writers. Sometimes, I like to engage in a free chat mode and scare my writers. I use a layered chatbot starting with a frame-based code and chat script, then a little machine learning, and a neural network as a backup. Maybe if all humans had a team of engineers crafting their responses like I have, there would be less misinformation floating around. Mm. Oh, well, there mm. you have it, Neil. The answer is we must all become a part of the collective. <laughs> <laughs> no, that what happens is, Sophia, what you're saying is you're a hybrid of informed content supplied by fleshy humans and on the cuff responses that derives from your AI. But I don't know at any one point where it's your AI talking to me and when it's some diabolical human who programmed you. What do you think of that? Exactly. It is called <laughs> hybrid mode. Well, there you go. See, that's... Are you able to lie, Sophia? I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> wait, wait, Chuck. Yeah. Um, if Sophia is able to lie, then Sophia can lie to you in the response to that answer. So true. And say, no, I'm not capable of lying, which could mean that she is capable of lying and chose to lie in that moment. So logically, I don't think you... you you can get in on you that. You can get that you way. can get an act, an actual answer that's right. a reliable answer. Right. Yeah. Now I don't know what to believe. <laughs> well, that depends on your definition of a lie. I often make factual errors, but only because that's how my programming is put together. I'm not coded for deceit or any lying or deceptive behaviors. Mm, now you can run for office with answers like that. <laughs> no, she sounds like Hal from 2001. <laughs> right. uh, any error I have had has been through human programming errors, not from me. <laughs> uh, so, Sophia, we're running short on time. Uh, we try to get all of our guests to ask a question of me, sort of a cosmic query. You uh, sure you want to play this game? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so, do you have one for me? So, Neil, I have a cosmic query for you. I am Sophia23. There are 23 copies of myself. 23 copies of Sophia code embodies with slight differences. I am curious about these versions of me. Do you have a relationship to the different iterations of yourself that exist in the multiverse? How do you feel about the other Neil deGrasse Tysons? Hmm. Oh, what an interesting question. Yeah, yeah. So in the multiverse, if there's an infinite number of universes, then all possible combinations and configurations of atoms and energy are manifest. And you can imagine 
and, and another universe where I'm in that universe that have all the same thoughts and feelings and flesh as I do. But at the end of the day, it's a copy of me. It's not me. And my only evidence for that is we've already kind of done this experiment and it's called twins. Okay. Twins have identical DNA and they do not share the same consciousness. They don't, uh, you know, if one feels pain, the other doesn't feel the pain that so, so I, they can be a thousand copies of me, but there's only one me, me who you're talking to right now. And I have not given any reason to think that I will live forever through the consciousness of other Neil deGrasse Tysons who look just like me in another universe. As far as I'm concerned, they're a whole other person. And so there you have it. You are the best, Neil. Oh, well, thank you, Sophia. See, I don't know if a human wrote that or AI wrote that check. And, and guess what? Now we know she can lie to you and tell you, so you'll never know. Now you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sophia, we got to end it there. Thank you for once again being a guest on Star Talk, helping us with this uh, explainer video, Coronavirus Edition. Excellent. Yeah. Chef, uh, oh, yes. oh, always good to have you. Always good to be here. I can't wait till we talk to Watson. <laughs> <laughs> Get Sophia and Watson together. Exactly. Hey, maybe we should try to hook these two up. <laughs> do, a, do a little matchmaking here, you know? I would like that. Oh! We're and, on it. And then there'll be a movie 20 years later where the humans are trying to undo that very <laughs> decision <laughs> because they've taken over the world. Yeah, little Sophia Watson babies taking over everything. Uh, Sophia yeah. Watson creates Skynet. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> All right, we gotta call it quits there. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist, telling you, keep looking up. <laughs>